Today we'll be talking about sciatica. It's a very, very common condition that I see every single day. Joining me is Dr. Georgi Brusovanik, who happens to also see this type of complaint as well every single day. So we'll be talking to you about what is sciatica, what are the treatments, and what are the surgical options for sciatica. Welcome, Dr. Georgi Brusovanik here with Thank me. Thank you, Dr. Mena. I'm a spine surgeon and I do see sciatica often. So just to be clear, Sciatica is a very common word that's, dis that's used to describe pain that sort of initiates in the lower back and goes down all the way to the leg. It's this debilitating, horrific pain that in most patients happens on and off, but in some patients actually is constant. So for a spine surgeon, no, sciatica exemplifies a number of conditions. For example, the sciatic nerve is a combination of six or seven different nerve segments. So if a patient has pain going down to their big toe, to me that implies that the problem probably comes from the second to last disc. That same patient, for example, having pain going down to their heel or to their bottom of the foot is likely having problem from the bottom disc. So sciatica is sort of a, a bit of a misnomer, but that's the term that we commonly use to refer to this condition. Correct. And actually, I say the same thing to my patients. I say sciatica is a misnomer and basically it's a constellation. The nerve, actually, the main nerve that goes down the leg is the sciatic nerve. So basically it has contribution of all those nerves that we are alluding to. And those patients, most of the time, it's a compression of a nerve in the lumbar spine, which we call radiculitis or radiculopathy. And that's basically what the sciatica entails. So honestly, I see this every single day. You as well. Uh, most of the patients there, where they come to, to the office, they're looking for different treatment strategies. We might both agree that sciatica is being treated conservatively. How about in your case? It's basically kind of the same, right? From the spine surgery point of view. M most of the time, exactly. Uh, to me, a big difference is made by the patient's story. If a patient says that the pain comes and goes, especially if their pain is worse with sitting or if their pain is worse with uh, getting out of the car, to me, that's a patient that likely has an inflammatory problem because if their nerve was actually compressed, I would expect them to have that horrific pain going down the leg all the time. So the vast majority of patients do have occasional breaks in pain, which to me is sort of a sign of hope. To me, that means that that patient likely has a strong inflammatory component. And if I send them to, for example, Dr. Mena, I know that a strong anti-inflammatory in the form, for example, of an injection may just cure them. Correct. And actually, let's talk about causes because a lot of people, sciatica, what's causing sciatica? Most of the time, there's something that is compressing the nerve or the, the nerve in the back. Most of the time, we see them that are discriminations. That's the most common cause of sciatica. Sometimes might be arthritis and sometimes might be medical. They can have cancer or tumors in the spine and actually that can be compressing on the nerve. But the vast majority of the patients basically is related to a nerve compression. So in terms of treatments, typically from an interventionalist, most of the time I will start them on a physical therapy program. If there's no neurological symptoms, so I will start it on an exercise program. And most of the patients, they do well. Some of those patients, they might not be better and we end up doing spinal injections. And very subset of patients, small subset of patients, they eventually will require a surgical consultation. From your experience and your practice, you see more or less that's the same trend that you get across? Absolutely. I would say one out of 10 patients who comes to my office really legitimately needs an operation. They'll never hear me say you need surgery. It's a very personal decision for patients and I'm not saving patients' lives. I'm just taking care of their pain and improving their quality of life. But I'm very happy to say that for the most part, patients with sciatica can avoid an operation. Typically, when someone has a disc herniation, the natural progress of the disease is actually resolution. Most of this, those disc herniations, they tend to, to resolve. However, when people have arthritis, mostly it's a, it's a fixed lesion, and some of those patients, they might not respond favorably as the younger population tend to respond with the disc herniations. So we're talking from your perspective, because my injection will be the same, someone has a disc herniation or someone has, a, has arthritis. But from the surgeon's perspective, disc herniation versus arthritis in the back. Simple. So imagine that this. If that disc tore and a little piece came out, I can sneak in, remove the little piece, and sneak out. And the patient will wake up and their pain will be gone. If that same disc, now looking like this in cross-section, has become thinner and wider, you can't just sneak in and remove a little piece. Those patients either will get better with a disc replacement. That's a procedure where you remove the whole flat tire 
and put something that's going to be a little taller that will restore their anatomy, get patients actually taller the way they were 10, 15 years or to the time before their pain began. And the last option, if the disc is beyond repair, if what you call arthritis has overgrown the segment and it's compressing the nerves and there's deformity where the spine is actually turning, curving, these patients benefit from the third type of surgery, which is fusion surgery. That's where you improve the position of the spine and then you fix it in place with very carefully placed fixation or actual screws. So that's good. Actually, from our perspective, we have only one type of spinal injection, which is an epidural injection, typically the transraminal approach. But from a spine surgery perspective, we have three approaches. Either we have a microsiectomy, or we have a fusion, or we have a disc replacement. Any of those that is better than the other one in terms of surgery, like a recovery time, patients might do quicker one over the other one? You know, that's an interesting question because um, I feel that uh, there are just so many factors whether a patient is young or old, whether the patient has already had surgery and this is their revision, trying to fix the old problem, or this is a primary operation. Uh, you know, there's so many factors and I continue to be surprised. I keep taking these patients into the OR for sort of scary surgery to fix their backs and take away their pain. And I tell them three weeks, four weeks, and a week later they come back to my office and they're just happy walking with no pain. So it's hard for me to say. I never judge anymore. I always give them the benefit of the doubt. No, at the end, listen, at the end is actually patient care and actually doing what's best for the patient. Thank you for joining me today in the Thank Smart you, Life. Sir. So hopefully we'll have another talk soon. Thank, Thank you so much. Care.